Uh, we are now going to look at environmental cleaning in relation to COVID-19. First of all, I would like to point out that it's important that we're using healthcare risk waste bags, the yellow bags for disposal of risk waste. So we're not going to be using our normal black or clear bags. So as you can see there in the picture, these are the yellow healthcare risk waste bags we're talking about. It is important that you have adequate numbers of bags available, particularly in residence bedrooms. So residents will need to be disposing of tissue papers that they've been using to cover their mouth or nose with coughing and sneezing. Therefore, those tissues need to be disposed of in a risk waste bag. Also, any cleaning um, cloths that have been used should be disposable and disposed of in risk waste bags. And obviously, our own personal protective equipment also needs to be disposed of in the healthcare risk waste bags. It's important that we do not overfill these bags, so about two thirds of the way up um, they need to be emptied. Don't have risk waste bags that are waiting collection to be left in areas um, where they're going to pose a risk of infection. So ideally keep them isolated in a designated area, um, whether that's going to be remaining in the residence bedroom or if you have a designated area where you have an isolated unit. Um, to keep them there safely. When you are going to close the risk waste bag, it is recommended that you're using a swan's neck technique. So that means, as you can see here in the picture, that at the very top of the bag, that it is folded back down onto itself to create a swan's neck and it is cured with a barcoded cable tie. So moving on then, in relation to the day-to-day -day cleaning of the environment where you have suspected or confirmed COVID-19 outbreak. There is no specific cleaning requirements required for the walls or the floors, so the usual practices are fine. <clears throat> we do need to pay very special attention to frequently touched surfaces, so such as light, light switches, door handles, toilet flushes, toilet sink tap. Um, also flat surfaces, so they would be things like bedside lockers and bedside tables um, and particularly areas where they are within the immediate range of the resident and if they're coughing or, or sneezing that droplets can land on those surfaces. So when we're cleaning on a day-to-day -day basis, certainly once a day the room needs to be cleaned down, focusing on the frequently touched flat surfaces ideally using a disposable cleaning cloth that is once used is placed into the healthcare risk bag. Um, you do need to use a little bit of judgment in relation to the areas that are immediately around the environment, particularly the bedside locker and the bedside table. They may require more than once um, to be cleaned on a 24 hour basis. The cleaning should be carried out using a detergent and a disinfectant. So the detergent can be a warm soapy water, alternatively your own cleaning products to look at them and see if they have detergent written on them. Um, if you're using a detergent, make sure that you dry the area or the equipment effectively before you would apply your disinfectant. Alternatively, you may actually have a combined detergent and disinfectant product which is fine for using. Where staff are going to be coming into the environment to do cleaning, household staff are recommended to think about, are they going to be coming into contact with a resident with suspected or confirmed COVID-19? So if they're entering into a residence room, they're going to have to um, come within one metre of the resident to, in order to be able to clean the bedside table and the bedside locker. So as a result of that, they would be required to use both contact precautions and droplet precautions, which means they're going to be using gowns, gloves, surgical face masks and goggles. If they're going to be coming into an environment where they're going to be able to maintain the distance from the resident, or if they're on the corridor, if you have an isolated unit, and there's no risk of them coming into contact with the resident, they can wear 
contact precautions, which are gloves and aprons. And um, when they're leaving the environment, obviously they need to remove all of their personal protective equipment and clean their hands correctly. Um, okay, in the event that a resident has been in contact with a communal environment, such as a dining room, sitting room, communal toilet, and they have suspected COVID-19, then that environment needs to be cleaned as soon as possible. So again, no um, necessary precautions specifically for um, walls or floors, but we do need to pay close attention to the flat surfaces and the frequently touched surfaces. So they're going to be the backs of chairs, the armrests of chairs, the tables, light switches, door handles, in the communal bathrooms, it's the hand wash basin, the hand wash taps, and the flush handle of the toilet. And um, again, we are using the detergent and disinfectant. Um, so we clean first with the detergent and then we use our disinfectant, or if you have a combined detergent and disinfectant product, that's fine. If there is a risk of coming into contact with the resident, and then the droplet precautions need to be taken as well as the contact precautions. If there is no risk of coming into contact with residents suspected or confirmed of COVID-19, then it is the contact precautions, it is the um, aprons and gloves. Again, when all personal protective equipment is being removed, ensure that proper hand hygiene is carried out. Where we have a resident that would be leaving their environment permanently, so in situations where the resident is deceased or they are being transferred out of the nursing home. And in this situation, the room is going to require terminal cleaning. When we're carrying out terminal cleaning, the first thing we need to do is close the door to the bedroom and place a sign on the door indicating what time the room was vacated. We are aiming to leave at a minimum one hour. If we can leave it overnight, that would be perfect. But at a minimum one hour before anybody enters the room to provide cleaning. Um, and the reason for this is that that time frame will allow for any droplets that are in the air to settle down on surfaces. So when the room is being entered for cleaning, then we only need to take contact precautions. We don't need to apply the droplet precautions. So the person doesn't need to wear the goggles or the surgical face mask. When we're entering into the room to do a terminal clean, all areas need to be cleaned. So that means that we're going to be cleaning with a detergent and then following that with a disinfectant or using a combined detergent and disinfectant product. Again, any clothes that are being, cloths that are being used should be disposable and placed into the healthcare risk waste bags. When we're looking at the cleaning of dishes and cutleries and residence trays that have been used for residents, that are um, suspected of or confirmed with COVID-19. There is no specific in relation to the actual washing of them. There they can go into the dishwasher. And um, if you don't have a dishwasher available, then they need to be washed in warm soapy water and then they're dried using disposable paper towel. And um, if a household member staff is coming into an isolated area to collect dishes and cutlery, um, and residence trays. Ideally, they should be able to access trays that will be stacked up onto a trolley so they don't have to have multiple um, entries and exits of an isolated area. If they're entering the isolated area, they again need to take um, account of is there a risk of them coming into contact with residents that are suspected or confirmed COVID-19. If this is the case, then they do need to apply um, contact precautions as well as um, droplet precautions. If they're not at risk of coming into contact with a resident, um, then they only need to take contact precautions. When they're leaving the isolated area, it's important that we're moving 
or personal protective equipment, disposing of it in a healthcare risk waste bag, and then cleaning their hands when they're outside of the isolated area and they're going to the kitchen, they would put on a disposable apron and um, disposable gloves. <clears throat> in relation to medical devices and medical equipment, ideally single use only items so that once they're used, they can be disposed of in the healthcare risk waste bag. However, that's probably not always going to be possible. So in situations where we have thermometers, stethoscopes, glucometers, ideally they would be single resident use items where they can remain in the residence room. Where we do not have the ability to provide single resident use items, then it's imperative that these items are disinfected as per manufacturer's guidance or using alcohol wipes prior to being used on other residents. Um, in relation to the management of linen, linen that's been used where a resident is suspected or confirmed with COVID-19 needs to be placed in the water-soluble um, or alginate bags as it's recognised as risk um, laundry. So when you're placing your bags your laundry into the water soluble bags, please do not overfill them. Make sure that you're securing the water soluble bag with the appropriate tie that comes with the bag. So avoid knotting the bag. You will notice that in the lapel on the side of the bag, there is you will find a white piece of string, a fine piece of thread, and that can be wrapped um, gently around the neck of the bag to secure it to it. so you don't actually have to knot the bag and um, then it goes down to the laundry in your red canvas bags and obviously items in the water soluble bags are not removed prior to be putting putting them into the washing machine when they're going into the washing machine they need to be washed at greater than 65 degrees for a minimum of 10 minutes